I think my entrepreneurial life started with a cookie stand when I was like eight years old, you know, typical story. Um, and then my, my first real company was a laundry business uh, that I started in college. And after running that for a few years, I got kind of fascinated with different forms of media and specifically how to kind of interrupt and, and, and kind of cut through the clutter of media. And so started doing these massive wall installations um, in Nashville, specifically for country music stars. And that was kind of our, our niche that we focused on and really putting their album covers larger than life on the sides of buildings and kind of, you know, cutting through and really getting attention in that regard. And ultimately ended up selling that company uh, to Clear Channel, one of the larger media companies in the world. And from that went on, you know, a series of different other entrepreneurial ventures before uh, landing with Tom's and, and down in Argentina. I think the thing interesting about the Tom story originating in Argentina, and that's where I, you know, first encountered uh, some children who didn't have shoes, is, is is sometimes surprising to people because Tom does so much work uh, in in places like Haiti or Ethiopia or Cambodia or places where you would think of much more intense poverty, and that's and that in some levels is true, but also in some levels. The worst poverty that I've ever experienced and seen is actually poverty that is close in proximity uh, to, to urban wealth um, because the, the people who um, don't, who are, are living in these either townships or ghettos see everything they don't have and so it's really crippling for them. And so what I experienced just outside of Buenos Aires was, you know, kids living in the street, sniffing glue, not going to school, not having proper clothing or shoes and and that poverty now after years and years of doing this still to this day was some of the most heart-wrenching poverty that I've ever seen and it's what ultimately kind of led me to want uh, to, to, to help these children that I met and you know for me the vehicle was shoes they didn't have shoes they needed shoes to go to school um, not having shoes was uh, you know kind of affecting their self-esteem their self-worth um, you know, really, you know, someone without shoes living on the street is, is seen very differently than someone that has a pair of shoes and has a proper clothing. And, and so I thought that was a basic need that we all deserve to have. And, and, and ultimately, that's what led to the idea of starting a shoe company where the company would not be based on just selling shoes, but really providing shoes to those in need. So we would shell, sell shoes to people who want them so that we could provide shoes to people who need them. And uh, that's where the one-for-one one idea uh, originated from, and this idea of what we called tomorrow shoes, um, which ultimately became Tom's. I think what's, what's interesting, especially looking back to 2006 when we started, uh, there was really nothing of this kind in the business world. It was either you know for-profit businesses that would write checks to charities at the end of the year for tax write-offs, or there were nonprofits who you know, subsided on donations all year long. And so Tom's was, I think, one of the first companies that was for profit, but, you know, deeply rooted in purpose and mission. And, uh, and not just purpose and mission from a philosophical standpoint, but actually dedicating a large percentage of our profits and our sales every year to fulfilling this mission. And that was with giving shoes every time we sold a pair. And so, you know, now there's many more companies that have followed Tom's and, and that's something that we are very proud of and, and we think is really amazing to think that this little idea that we had you know, 11 years ago has now not only provided 75 million children a pair of shoes, but it's also inspired thousands of businesses around the world to incorporate a, a real giving component to the sale of their product. Um, but back then, it was, it was really a radical idea. I think it's an interesting question of like where inspiration comes from. I mean, one of the most inspiring people I've ever met was Muhammad Yunus. Uh, I met him when I was at Richard Branson's safari camp. I mean, they, you know, you know, it's like I, I'm inspired by both equally. I think, you know, I think that I'm inspired by the entrepreneurs that who have, that have disrupted industries that have done things differently. Uh, I'm definitely not inspired by the wealth they've created um, or you know, the businesses they built. It's more about the ideas and the courage it took 
to take that idea and turn it into a reality, which is the same thing for Muhammad Yunus and, and the Grameen Bank. You know, it was an idea that, you know, we can help the poorest of the poor by extending them credit, um, and that was something that very few had ever done before, and actually showed that it actually was a sustainable model as well. Um, so I think what inspires me is really, you know, people who are willing to take risk and try business models and 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 create businesses that 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 most people would think would not work, and to show that they can work by, you know, taking a non-typical approach, and so. That's where I'm constantly pushing myself and trying to surround myself by is, is people who truly uh, are thinking outside the box and who truly are willing to try things differently, to really think differently. Who gave us these? Nate did. Um, are they the same? They're the same ones. He just found another pair today, so okay. we wanted to make sure that you had the blue ones too. I like them. I think that, I don't know, why do you think these got cut from the bottom? I don't know. I mean, I think it could potentially be like the sole just for our market, but seeing them They're in person, nice. I like them so much better yeah. than I do in the picture, actually. Which color do you like better? You know, I think that the way we've always approached our marketing is are really just in kind of basic storytelling, you know? I mean, first off, as the company's grown, we've recognized that we have to have amazing product. So we've hired you know, more designers, more developers than we had in the early days so that we could really create, you know, desirable product that people really uh, love wearing and that are attracted to in its own merit and right. Um, but then integrating our giving component and really making sure that it is relevant to our customers is all about storytelling. You know, there's a lot of amazing things happening out there because of the giving that Tom's is doing. And while the numbers have gotten really big, um, what really resonates with people still are individual stories. And so whether we're using, you know, virtual reality technology to take you to a village in Peru and meet the kids that are getting the shoes, um, or, you know, creating an online app or platform that allows you to choose where your give is going, whether it's what country it's going to or what, you know, kind of product or issue you're most in, engaged in. I think it's about involving the customer in the story. And the more that it becomes their story and part of their identity and not something that Tom's is doing, I think that is a big part of the future of the way that we will market and the way we will sell our products. Because I think you know, people don't want to be sold to, they want to be involved in or invited to be part of the story. Next week, so, what do we have? Show us the rest of this week. So we got Cash okay, that tomorrow morning, Patton Isle Drive, great. He gets in at 8.30 tonight. Great. Um, then you have guest speaker tomorrow. Yeah, I'll take that to read on the way home. Okay, okay. and um, Doctor. then the doctor's H appointment. H&S calls from the house. From the house. Great. Yep. Cool. Oh God, great. Cool. Well, I'm gonna take off. Okay. Okay, great. That sounds awesome. Thank see you, you tomorrow. Yeah, see you. As a consumer myself, um, you know, the brands that I have I have engaged in, and it's probably no surprise, are ones that have, you know, some real purpose, you know. There's an awesome denim company called Height Denim out of Wales. Uh, there's like nine people that work there, and they have this deep mission of bringing back denim manufacturing to their town. Their town used to make, you know, hundreds of thousands of jeans a year and then as you know as so much of production went to the far east and places like that the the town literally shriveled up and died and these amazing entrepreneurs um, have really brought back the craftsmanship of great denim and you know every pair is 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 very handmade every pair has a history tag in it so you can tag photos with your denim and so if you sell them or give them away then the next person picks up the tag and so now you can see all the pictures of someone else wearing your jeans which is really cool um, and and then in the and so that each pair of the denim has this life and I think they do a great job of storytelling. They're building their brand on purpose. They really have a, a, a social mission that I think is important for that town. Um, and, and they're just doing it in a really smart, smart way. And so they're a small company, but to me they have like all the ingredients of what I think makes uh, an important brand. On a bigger company scale, but still a mid-sized company is Patagonia. You know, they're just up the road from us. Uh, I think they have continued to really walk the walk. Uh, and not just talk the talk, and I, I really admire how they have 
they have also gone from a company that had good product and an amazing story to a product company that has great product and a great story. And so I think as Tom thinks about our trajectory and going forward, you know, we are really uh, on that same journey, maybe a decade or two behind them in terms of when we were founded. Um, but it's a company that you know I I admire I admire a lot. Okay. Bye guys. Bye. See you tomorrow. Yeah, that, that's the best part about, I think, the Tom's model, and I think the thing I'm most proud of from a legacy perspective of how we've affected business culture is now there's far more humanitarian efforts and aid funded by business than just charitable donations and that kind of endless need to fundraise. And so now you're having people who might have started a nonprofit, you know, a decade or two ago, say, actually, I'm going to start a business, and that business is going to fund my philanthropic goals and desires. And I think that's a more sustainable way long term. Um, and I also think it's an interesting value proposition to where you're asking someone to buy your product that they are going to get to use and enjoy versus just writing a check to your charity. One of the things that's really wonderful about my life and work with Tom's is that kind of most of my interest and passions as entrepreneurs could be kind of uh, explored underneath the Tom's brand. But at the same time, you know, I'm open to the idea that I'm young and there's a lot of exciting ideas and opportunities out there and there might come a time where I do something besides Tom's or outside of Tom's. But, but right now at this point, I'm, I'm kind of most, um, most interested in, in really helping this next chapter of Tom's. It's almost like a parent, right? It's like I've, I, I gave birth to Tom's and I was there in the early years and now Tom's is like, you know, kind of going off to college and, and I still want to stay connected to my, you know, my, my son or daughter at college, but I also need to know that it needs to go learn its own things and be able to, you know, take care of itself without me. And so that's, I think, uh, goes back to that same analogy of feeling more like a coach and less like the athlete.